pages of the book which seem to be trying to associate Christianity with Judaism. Okay. So I say, you know what? These pieces of the book are originally from another source and were basically used by somebody to associate Christianity with Judaism. And they're not something that Jesus really said because they seem to be further, they seem to be kind of had this goal which emerged later. Of Christians and Jews trying to figure out how close is Christianity to Jesus. And by going back and looking at a book, I can figure out that parts of the book are not are not really the work of its author because they are really trying to deal with issues that emerged later after the author died. So we can think of hadiths, for example, that the Prophet said. Indeed, the most befitting, the, most, the person most befitting of rule is Muawiyah. The person most befitting of rule is Muawiyah. Hmm. You think the Prophet really said this? This seems to be really serving Umayyad political interests. The Umayyad's caliphate takes over with uh, Muawiyah as its leader after the, the, the murder of Ali. And they have this big problem of legitimacy because Muawiyah and his father Abu Sufyan were not exactly the earliest converts to Islam. They were not exactly the most devoted converts to Islam. They weren't there by the Prophet's side throughout his whole career. So they need to think about some way to legitimize their rule. So they say, well, the Prophet said that Muawiyah is the most fit person for rule. So Ignaz Goldzer went back and said, hmm, when we find these hadiths, this isn't really something the Prophet said. This is something that was made up later to serve a certain political agenda. Or we have a hadith that says, indeed there will be a part of my community that will exit my community like an arrow, like an arrow leaving a bow. And Goldzer says, hmm, do you think the Prophet really said this? Or is this basically something that Muslims made up to explain the Kharijites? Who are the Kharijites? They're the people who Kharaju left the Muslim left Ali's camp the Ali's army after they disagreed with his decision to arbitrate the Battle of Safin. And the Prophet says, for example, that the people who don't believe that God has predestined everything we do, they are like the Zoroastrians of this community. They're the dualists of this community. So as Goldzer says, you know, the, this, this whole issue of Qadar and Qadar and Qadar and predestination and free will didn't exist during the Prophet's lifetime. I mean, this is a debate that emerged later. And this hadith is clearly made up by Sunni Muslims who are trying to vilify anybody who doesn't agree with the Sunni position on Qadar and Qadar. So, basically goes back and says that a lot of the hadith, and certainly the most controversial hadith, are really not the words of the Prophet at all. They're things that later Muslims made up to serve various political, sectarian, or legal agenda. Well, how did they how did they make these hadith up? How do we know this? How does how did how do Western scholars know this? A scholar named Joseph Schacht, who died in 1969, said that what happened was that the snads moved backwards. Everybody knows what snads are, right? The snads are changing transmission to the problem. The snads grow backwards. Now how do we know this? We have three generations of books. Malik died. 179 or 795 of the Christian calendar. His student, the Shafi'i, died 204, 819, or 820 of the Christian calendar. And two generations later, Al Bukhari. We look at these three books. Three books that come one generation after the other. Now, if we look at Maddox and what the, we find that there is a report in it from a successor. So a successor is somebody who is the generation after the companions. The companions are those people who knew the prophet. The next generation of those people who knew the companions. If you see there's a report, let's think about, let's use this don't put your feet on the table idea again. A successor like Hassan al Basri says, don't put your feet on the table. And then I look in the Um, the big legal book of the Shafi, and I see the same report, don't put your feet on the table, but this time a companion is saying, Omar bin al Khattab says, don't put your foot on, feet on the table. This ad is growing backwards. First it's from the successor. Now I find the report is from Omar bin al-Khattab, a companion of the Prophet. And then in Al-Bukhari's book I find, actually this is a report from the Prophet. <coughs> Al-Bukhari says, it's an ad back to the Prophet. The Prophet said, don't put your feet on the table. Now, 
what Schaff says is, look, if you go to the earliest sources, Malik's Mwanta, this is, this is not a hadith from the prophet. This is something that the successor said. So what happened was, these Muslim scholars in the first couple centuries of Islam are sitting around arguing with one another about how to be good Muslims. And in order to trump your opponent in an argument, what do you do? You start referring the, your material back to an earlier, more authoritative source. So if Suhail says to me, you know, a successor so-and-so said something. Well, I say, well, you know, Omar said this. And he says, well, you know, the prophet said this. So there's kind of this attempt to go back to the earliest authority, the most powerful authority in Islam, which is the Prophet. So, Shah says that hadith are made up by, in a process of trying to find more and more authoritative sources as the basis for your religion. And that in, do, in that happens by its snabs going backwards. Is that clear to everybody? Any questions? No? Okay. Now, People who've come after Shah, Western scholars like G.H.A. Greenwald, who's Dutch, and Shah is Swiss, uh, says, you know how we can tell that Hadith is made up and when it's made up? We can find that there's a common link in the Isnaz and Hadith. So we can see that, let's look at three books, the Sahih of Al-Bukhari, the Sahih of Muslim, and the Jami of the Now Now we look at all of their different narrations, their change of transmission for Hadith. We see that they all converge on this successor, Let's say it's a Zuhri or an Hassan al Basri, who died around the year 80 or 700. And then he said he heard from a companion who heard it from the Prophet. He's been one. Now, what it looks like, what happened is that this common link really is the one who made up the Hadith. So, this successor is the one who said, Don't put your feet on the table. And then these two links in the Isnad back to the Prophet are really made up try and make the report seem more authoritative. Because if the prophet had really said this, and if the companion had really transmitted from the prophet, then we'd have other chains of transmission. And the fact that there's really only any historical evidence for this hadith existing at all comes at the time of a successor, means that this person must have made the report up. And then he tried to make it look more authoritative by giving himself this as mad back to the prophet. Well, a German scholar named Harold Matsky came along and struck a blow for, I guess, Muslim um, and said that, well, yeah, that's a great theory if you look at only three books of Hadith. But let's say you look at other books. You look at the Hayyat al Awliya of Abu Naim al Bahani. You look at the Jamia of Ibn Wahab. You look at the Sunan al Kubra of Al Bayh. What you find is that there's actually a lot more Sinai's than Sinai. And that what had been the common link before, as a successor, is really the companion. So what you find is that these hadiths that earlier people like Shaft and, and Yoingul said that were made up during the time of the successors, people like Hassan al-Basri, two generations removed from the Prophet, really came from, at the very latest, the, the companions. And if hadith is, if the companions are, are saying that the Prophet said something, then it's probably a good, good chance that he actually said it. Because if you're a companion and you wander around saying the prophet said something, someone's going to either come up to you and say, you're crazy, I never heard that. Or they're going to say, yeah, I, I heard that too. So in a way he said that, Matsuki said, you can't be lazy and just look at a few sources and look at those as not. You have to go look at all the different Muslim hadith books out there. And you see that the common link is actually a lot earlier than you thought. What about other responses to these criticisms of the Hadith tradition. So let me ask you a question. Somebody give me advice. Any advice? Any any advice? Somebody give me advice. Squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom. Okay. Who told you that? My mommy. Okay. But you didn't say my mom told me to squeeze the toothpaste from the bottom, did you? No, I didn't. Okay. But if I asked you, hey, do you have any advice uh, from your mom? It is useful. Yeah. My mom said it's used to taste God. Now, you can have, the, the prophet is such a huge figure in Islamic history. He's, he's the source of you know, how we understand our law, our ethics, morals, everything. He's, so, he's like, in some ways, our mom here, right? 